week or so off, the Belleville Sens podcast is back again. David Foote and Brock Ormond here for episode number seven of season two on the Belleville Sens Entertainment Network. Um, we won't talk too much, Brock, about a couple weeks ago. It wasn't so great for the Senators uh, on a five-game losing skid, but they were able to snap that last week. They earned five of six points uh, in a pretty heavy divisional week. And uh, we'll recap that. We'll get you set for this week as well, including matchups in Laval and then at home to Grand Rapids. And we've got an interview from last week with Ryan McKinnon, Sens defenseman, that we're going to play for you on the show this week as well. So uh, thanks for tuning in. And uh, hope you're ready to chat some uh, b sends for uh, about 45 minutes or so. Uh, again, Brock, uh, things were not going great for the Senators uh, a week or so ago, but uh, last week they managed to turn it around. They uh, pick up five of a possible six points against uh, the uh, the Rochester Americans and the Utica Comets. And, uh, I mean, we're recording uh, during practice right now. I think spirits seem high, and, uh, you know, despite that slump that's now come and gone, everything seems to be going all right in Belleville Sands land. That's right, and it's uh, it's just amazing how things can change. The ebbs and flows of a 72-game AHL season. We're still in the first quarter, like you uh, said uh, during the broadcast on Saturday, David. But the Belleville Sens are finding out uh, what it's what life is like right now. A uh, couple guys uh, up in. Uh, in Ottawa, but they get them back and it ends up uh, working out pretty well for them. Roby Arvente with a goal uh, in each of the last three games, which all ended with at least one point for the Sens, and uh, the last one being a 4-2 victory over the Rochester Americans. So uh, nice to see them bounce back, and a, a good effort too, falling behind uh, by a goal on Saturday, but finding a way to claw back into it. They get three goals in the second, and it's Roby Arvente again. Uh, he'll be a com common theme over the next uh, couple of weeks, I would imagine. He picks up uh, the late goal uh, with four seconds left in the second period that ends up being the game winner. And then on the Friday night, uh, great effort as well against Rochester. Uh, come up a little short in the shootout, but they do get a late goal thanks to, again, who else? Roby Arvente. <laughs> and uh, coming off of that nice comeback win over the Utica Comets Wednesday. But key go uh, good goaltending was key, and we'll talk about that more as well between uh, Mad Sogard and Kevin Mandelazy, both outstanding over the last uh, three games, Mando especially on the uh, Saturday, uh, coming through with a big breakaway save early in the third off Michael Mersch with the score, uh, only separated by a goal in favor of Belleville. That's the kind of save that can win you a game and potentially it puts you on the right track to winning in the American Hockey League, especially in such a tight, compact division that is the North. Yeah, and, and it's like that every year uh, as well. Uh, we were chatting um, at uh, radio station visit this week with Jared Lucas Savages and uh, Zach Ostopchuk, who's obviously new to the league, but uh, the reputation of the North Division tends to precede itself, and uh, everybody knows that it's never going to be easy uh, if anybody from the division comes into town, and that includes the Belleville Senators. Uh, like we said, they were on that slump, but uh, didn't really matter. They're able to go into a tough building in Utica and grind out a 6-3 uh, victory there, and then they come home and drop that loss in the shootout to Rochester and then, like you mentioned, they go down early Saturday, but they come from behind. They pick up a win here on home ice and, and take the extra points um, and, and keep the, the Amherst out of overtime on the Saturday game, which helps. Um, Sens aren't, you know, rocketing up the standings right now, but they are making steady progress in the right direction. And I think, you know, as we're, what, two or so weeks out from Christmas time, three weeks out from Christmas, uh, it's a pretty good spot to be as long as they can keep building. Absolutely, yeah. And then that's what it all is, is about is just chipping away at the standings. You're not going to uh, to shoot up when you're facing teams like Rochester and Utica six and eight times a year. Plus, you got Toronto and Laval facing each other uh, 10 and 12 times. So uh, anytime you can pick up, uh, points of any kind, whether it's one, two, or what have you, against teams like Rochester and Utica is so important. And uh, they did that, three out of four points, and they really uh, hurt Rochester with that shootout win. It's I know it's weird to say uh, after a loss, but a shootout loss, as you know, is basically 50-50. Uh, pretty much a toss-up. So uh, for Belleville to get in and, and have a good performance from Mad Sogard and making three out of four stops is impressive as well. But uh, the Belleville Sens definitely uh, gave themselves a lot of favors and a good start to the month of December after a nice end to snap that losing skid after a... Uh, a bit of a rough go, and, and uh, that's all it is. It's like I said, ebbs and flows of a season. Sometimes you're going to be uh, flying high on a 6-7 game winning streak. Sometimes you're going to be struggling and really eating at yourself, trying to figure out what you got to do to really get back uh, in the season and in games. And David Bell, of course, is a veteran guy. He knows that you can't get too high or too low, and 
it uh, may be a cliche, but it's absolutely true because uh, the Sens certainly didn't get too low after that five-game losing skid, and look at what happened. They come back and gain points four of a possible five games dating back to the overtime loss in Hartford. Uh, this is Episode 7 of Season 2 of the Belleville Sens podcast with uh, myself, David Foote, and Brock Ormond, and it, it is a busy month in November, 12 games, and I think like nine of them are inside the division, so that's 18 points up for grabs that you can keep away from the other teams that are directly chasing you. The Sens... Uh, do uh, go to uh, uh, sorry they they don't go anywhere outside the division this month Grand Rapids is here this weekend and uh, Wilkesbury Scranton is here mid month but other than that it's a heavy dose of the Toronto Marlies uh, the Amherst are done couple meetings with uh, Laval and then Cleveland as well. Um, Laval aside, all teams that are ahead of Belleville in the standings, so more opportunity here this this month uh, to, to make some ground, and uh, they've got some bodies back, which we'll touch on in uh, our later segment. We'll recap the transactions of the week, get you set for the week uh, to come ahead. But just looking back at last week again, Brock, what uh, what really stood out for you in terms of what the Senators were doing to, to generate uh, offense and, and to find success? And maybe it wasn't the offense because they uh, you know clamped down pretty good on the back end too yeah well it's it was all about uh, you yeah you mentioned the goaltending defense so key but uh, also the Belleville Sens uh, used their feet while they were energetic especially on that Saturday night uh, guys like Garrett Pilon, Zach Ostapchuk and Yuri Smako three big boys that can really uh, run the gamut and uh, Pilon was was causing all sorts of havoc for the Rochester defense in particular. Then you got Smakel making that nice lob pass into Pilon for a centering pass to a stap check for a second in the game on that Saturday night that pretty much put the Amherst away. And that that's all it really was, was energetic play and the speed and the forechecking and the tenacity that really caused the Rochester Americans a lot of trouble. And uh, also the goaltending of uh, Sogar and Mandelazi, like we mentioned, uh, especially on the Wednesday for Sogar because uh, he was his play was so key in helping the Sen uh, reverse the uh, the tide a little bit and come back from that 3-1 deficit against the Comets team that's always tough and as we heard uh, on the broadcast Wednesday pretty hostile environment too those Comets fans are ruthless on the officials in particular <laughs> but also the opposition yeah they'll uh, they'll let you hear it for sure um, and maybe just finish the thought on goaltending Kev Mandelaze earns his first win of the season uh, on uh, on Saturday in the quick turnaround uh, really nice to see for him uh, he looked confident from the get-go um, you know he's had a couple of those games where you can maybe tell early on that it, it might not be his best night, but uh, he was on form uh, on the weekend, and, and I think that's uh, more of what the Belleville Senators are going to need from uh, their number two in the crease. Absolutely, and uh, that's going to be a big uh, piece of why the Belleville Sens will be successful going up the rankings and the standings and keeping uh, things uh, tight against teams like the Marlies, like Laval, like uh, Brochester that we mentioned, Utica. And you can see the confidence level of uh, both guys is starting to rise. And if they can uh, get on a roll and play off each other over the next uh, month or so, then uh, they'll be in a really good spot. But, of course, as you know, uh, injuries, call-ups can always play a factor. And, and both, but both guys have been outstanding. And Levy Marilina, too, even uh, with a couple of struggles there before he was sent back to Allen, he was also very solid as well. So if they can keep those uh, two and three guys rolling consistently, then that's going to do a world of confidence and do a world of wonders for this Belleville Send squad because, it's, again, goaltending is so important in any level. Uh, if you don't have good goaltenders, then your, your season is basically uh, in jeopardy and in, in ruins. So, uh, again, Belleville can score, uh, can know they can score maybe two, three, four goals in a game and still know they can win because of the man uh, behind them in the crease. Yeah, and, uh, you know, one of the things this team um, has, has kind of shown all season is you talked about the effort and work ethic and, uh, you know, I would add togetherness to that. This group has been very connected from the get-go, and uh, they are developing that to anything to win mentality. And one of the guys who really is kind of spearheading that is one of the veteran players for the Belleville Senators, a guy who doesn't play every game. Uh, he's, you know, not uh, in the lineup every night, not necessarily wearing a letter, but adds a lot to this group in terms of what he brings in his past experience and, and what he's willing to do for the club. Uh, that man is Ryan McKinnon, and he will be our guest when we come back on uh, Episode 7 of Season 2 of the Belleville Sens Podcast. So stick around. Back in a sec on the Belleville Sens Entertainment Network. Bring the cheer with the Belleville Senators. This festive season, give the gift of hockey with the Belleville Senators Holiday Pack. 
Score six tickets for as low as $150, two Sens mugs, and a Sens ornament. Act fast. Limited inventory available. This offer skates away December 22nd. Visit the ticket hub at BellBellSens.com or the BellBell Sens store. For more on the Sens seasonal offers, visit BellBellSens.com. The BellVille Senators wish you happy hockey. Continuing on on uh, Season 2, Episode 7 of the Belleville Sens Podcast. David Foote and Brock Ormond here. We recap the previous week in our first segment. Senators picking up uh, five of six points inside the division. A win in Utica, a shootout loss at home to Rochester, and a regulation win against the Amherst last night. Has the Senators in fifth place out of seven teams heading into this week. Again, we'll tee up the games uh, in Laval Wednesday and against Grand Rapids on Friday and Saturday coming up. Uh, Saturday is the teddy bear toss, so uh, get your stuffed animal, get your tickets. We hope to see you here at CAA Arena in uh, support of the Belleville uh, Firefighters Toy Drive. Again, more on that to come later on in the program. Uh, This segment, uh, we're going to dedicate to one of the veteran players on this team. Not a veteran uh, of games in Belleville, per se, but a veteran of Uh, the American Hockey League, and uh, one of the players that was identified by uh, General Manager Ryan Bonus and uh, Hockey Operations Manager Sean McCauley and the scouting staff as uh, a key piece uh, of depth for the Belleville Senators this season, and that is defenseman Ryan McKinnon. Um, We will hear from him an interview we did with him in Utica last week uh, on a game that he didn't even play, and I think that's, you know, just one kind of sign of uh, the type of player he is, the type of teammate he is. Uh, it doesn't matter if he's not in the lineup. Uh, he's always willing to chat and, uh, and you know, uh, talk about the season and, and share, you know, what he thinks uh, this team is capable of and, and talk about his impact. Uh, so we'll hear from him in just a couple minutes. But um, maybe what have you thought of, uh, of Ryan McKinnon Brock and kind of his addition uh, to this group and what he's brought? Yeah, I think he's brought a lot of uh, leadership, like you said, veteran presence and uh, the type of guy that could do whatever for his for his team that he's asked of him, uh, he can play uh, up, uh, play D, play the uh, seventh pair D or the third pair D, uh, seventh defenseman. He can also play uh, up and forward, like we've seen a couple times uh, recently. Plays in the fourth line, and he's just as effective there. And he actually allows uh, guys more room. His two forward line mates a little more room to create stuff and. Uh, for Ryan McKinnon, that's the type of guy he is. Like you said, he'll do whatever it takes for the team. Some guys may be a little bit more worried about going from D to an unfamiliar position uh, or vice versa. But uh, this type of guy, or even sometimes a uh, forward uh, playing you know, wing instead of center or a defenseman playing on his offside, his left side instead of his right, so when he's a right-hand shot. So that's the, that's the kind of guy McKinnon is. He can uh, jump in any point in the lineup and do whatever it takes to, uh, to help the team win. And that's the kind of guy you need to have on your team if you want to uh, to win, really, because uh, it's a it's a tough uh, season and and uh, sometimes injuries happen, sometimes guys get called up, and so McKinnon will step in and do whatever it takes to stay on an American Hockey League team and get himself uh, some good lucks. So let's hear from the 29-year-old from Summerside, PEI, Ryan McKinnon, our guest on Episode 7 of Season 2 of the Belleville Sens podcast. We're with the defenseman Ryan McKinnon, who's not in the lineup tonight, but has had a pretty eventful uh, trip, I would say, of playing forward for a couple games, visiting some familiar places, so we thought we'd catch up. Thanks for the time, man. Yeah, thanks for having me. Um, yeah, it's been a whirlwind of a road trip. Um, obviously, not, we're not getting the results that we wanted, but um, yeah, this league is, is so crazy with the lineups. It all depends on, on what's happening in the NHL and stuff, so when you're down bodies, you, you try to find a way to fit in and you know, help out when you can, and for me, that happened to be forward this weekend, but um, yeah, we're hoping for a different result tonight. Yeah, for sure. Uh, We'll touch on some of that here uh, through this discussion. First of all, how are you settling into Belleville? Uh, We haven't chatted since uh, training camp, I think. Um, How how have things been? Awesome. Um, Absolutely love Belleville, love being in Canada. Um, It really does remind me of home. Um, Prince Edward Island, you have that countryside, you also have, you know, the downtown feel as well, lots of, lots of good restaurants and stuff, and you know, obviously with a, such a great team, um, not on the ice, but uh, off the ice as well, um, you know, everyone's gelling together. You can 
really go to dinner with anybody out there and um, you know yeah it's been great so far. Yeah, uh, we talked a little bit at training camp about the number of Maritimers in the room is that attitude kind of helping at a time like this? Yeah absolutely anytime you get a bunch of Maritimers together it's uh, it's, it's great and everyone's Everyone seems to be, you know, gelling together, competing as well. And, um, you know, when you get those familiar faces from back home, um, makes for a great time. Uh, things obviously are not going great yeah. right now. Um, how have you felt about the, the first 15 games as a whole for this group? Because I, I feel like this stretch is not really um, a sign of, of what this team is capable of. Yeah, I agree. Uh, it's hard when you're in these times uh, to zoom out a little bit. And like you said, the first 15 games, you know, we have been playing good hockey. We just haven't gotten the results that we wanted. But, um, you know, right now, you know, when we haven't been getting the results, it does it does make times like this difficult. But bigger picture, when you zoom out, the team is playing hard, playing well, and uh, we'll get this turned around. Um, well, let's uh, talk about your uh, playing forward this week. Uh, you told me in training camp you're the type that will do anything to get the win, um, and that's been on display. You fought. You've uh, again, uh, you know, played when needed. Um, what was that transition like for you, um, and how did you find it? Yeah, uh, I actually learned during COVID year when there was so much player turnover that, uh, you know, I'm not bad up front and um you know anytime you can just use your speed work hard um you know Belzy came to me and had a, had a little bit of a discussion and you know the opportunity came where he needed me up front just for the numbers and stuff and you know it's it's an easy job when you make it easy and when, when you play with great line mates you just keep everything simple and, and you don't over complicate things it's um you know it was it, it was also fun it's also nice being in the lineup and, and try to help out when you can yeah i gotta get the legs going a little bit though yes the four check is definitely a lot harder than, than gapping up as a d yeah um, we uh, were in Bridgeport. Uh, we were in Lehigh Valley earlier this season, a couple places that you played. Uh, what was it like going back to some familiar stomping grounds? Yeah, it's awesome. I mean, I, you, obviously you can't say enough great things about those places. Um, Lehigh was awesome. You know, the Lamorellos in, in the New York Bridgeport organization, are, they have the name in hockey because, you know, they do they do the right things. They treat people, you know, the same great. And, um, you know, it's always, it's always nice when you're competing against your buddies and then after the game you, you can see them off the ice and stuff. So it's always, it's always nice going back. Um, what are the keys to this group turning things uh, around? Uh, again, uh, they did have a five-game losing streak last season, a little bit later in the year. Uh, chance to kind of get this one out of the way and, and put it behind you. Yeah, it's you know it's a cliche answer, but just sticking you know to to keeping it simple. When you're in these kind of skids and slumps, you know it's it, it's easier to go on onto your own page. You know you start trying things that you don't usually do, and, and you don't rely on each other as much. So when when you stick together as, as a team and, you know, realize that no one is coming to help, you know, yeah, yeah, we might get some extra bodies, but the answer is in our dressing room. And, um, you know, if we can just get back to what we were doing, like we had a great first period the other night in Bridgeport, and then, you know, it seems like a goal to go in and then, then things change. So if we can just keep keep on the right track and, and we'll turn this ship around. All right. Uh, lastly, we're going to run through some behind the B questions for you. Uh, just the easy Easy, simple stuff. Uh, I'm sure you've answered these a million times before. Uh, we'll start with your favorite player growing up. Uh, who was it that you kind of watched and, and maybe tried to model yourself after as a youngster? Honestly, I didn't have a favorite player. I was always just, I always liked watching people that I, I, I knew a little bit, like especially coming from PEI, such a small place. You you have the Brad Richards, you know, and then and then you look at the Tampa era and then you see like the Headmans now. So, I mean, even like watching like Adam McQuay, even Nathan McKeever behind our benches. You know, so anytime you can you watch someone familiar with, it's, it's always nice. Um, what's the most used app on your phone? The most used app right now is 100% my fantasy football. I am always on that. How's the team doing? <laughs> we're good. We're, we're, we're making it to playoffs, so that's a, that's a plus. Perfect. Um, Messi or Ronaldo? Uh, you got to go Messi, uh, especially watching this, you know, recent years in Miami and stuff. It's, it's, it's incredible. All right. Um, favorite uh, musical artist? Favorite artist? Right now, uh, it'd have to be Luke Holmes. We saw him a couple times. Kit Moore is always always great as well, so I have to go with those two. All right, and uh, you're not in the lineup tonight, but what's the go-to pregame meal for you? Uh, it's cliche. It's just, you know, pasta and chicken, some sort of carb and a little bit of protein and lots of water, and you're ready to go. Yeah, whatever uh, Dano gets set up for the guys <laughs> is basically it, right? Yeah, whatever Dan's got. Dan's the man, so we'll leave it at that. That's awesome. I uh, really appreciate the time, Ryan. Uh, thanks so much, and, uh, yeah, we'll talk to you again soon, I'm sure. Awesome. Thank you. Sends defenseman Ryan McKinnon. 
So there's uh, a little bit more background on Ryan McKinnon, and you can just tell from uh, the way that he talks, the way that he carries himself, um, you know, a great addition to this team in this locker room and, um, you know, helps to keep the spirits up and, and can, I think, really, you know, impart some wisdom on these younger players uh, that are coming up through the American Hockey League ranks. Yeah, and he's uh, got a great attitude about it all, too. That's the, the key thing. And sometimes uh, when guys don't play, they, they do get maybe a little sullen or distant with the team and start, uh, you know, question themselves, wonder what's going wrong. And uh, Ryan McKinnon's not that type of guy. You can really tell just based on uh, his conversation with you and also uh, just his interactions with uh, with the coaching staff. And he's found a way to uh, carve a niche out, really, and that's all it is, is just carving a niche as a, as a guy uh, that's a little bit more towards the bottom of the lineup, just finding a way to get in. And like he said in the interview, it's always uh, fun to play no matter what position you're in. And uh, forechecking works uh, tough for him, but he made it look pretty easy in that uh, <laughs> that last game, uh, that last home game. He was uh, outstanding there. And so, uh, yeah, that's, like I said, that's the type of guy that you want to have in your lineup. There's always, always a good uh, time when those guys uh, from PEI come into the picture and start uh, – really making life difficult on the opposition. So uh, the Belleville Sens are very lucky to have a guy like Ryan McKinnon in the lineup, and hopefully we'll see him uh, crack that code again and get that first uh, Belleville goal. And uh, he probably won't have to play forward uh, coming up. That's because we've got some bodies back from Ottawa, and it looks like, uh, judging by practice, some guys might be healthy as well, too, heading into the week. We will tee up the week to come in our final segment of uh, Season 2, Episode 7 of the Belleville Sens podcast. Back in a sec on the Belleville Sens Entertainment Network. Network, stay with us. Bring the cheer with the Belleville Senators. Give your festivities game. Gather your group and see the Belleville Senators in action. Elevate your holiday party and book an exciting experience for your friends, co-workers, or family. Secure your spot today at the Ticket Hub online at bellbellsends.com or reach out by email tickets at bellbellsends.com. For more on the Send seasonal offers, visit bellbellsends.com. The Belleville Senators wish you happy hockey. Back on the Belleville Sins podcast, final segment of episode number seven as we get set for three more uh, big games this week, all inside the North Division. Again, the Senators travel to Laval and uh, take on the Rocket at Place Bell on Wednesday night. That is December 6th, depending on when you're listening to this. December 8th, Friday night, the Grand Rapids Griffins make their first visit to Belleville since the 2018-19 season, and uh, they're here again on Saturday night, December the 9th, for our teddy bear toss in support of the Belleville Firefighters Toy Drive. We'd love to see you at both those games this weekend, uh, but especially the teddy bear toss to donate some uh, toys to uh, kids who may need them across the uh, Quinty region this holiday season. Uh, David Foote and Brock Ormond here. Uh, we've talked about last week. We've caught up with Ryan McKinnon, so uh, let's dissect the week to come as the Senators uh, again head to Laval Wednesday. Um, let's start with the Rocket first, because this team's a little bit of an enigma this year. They have some really good players, uh, a couple of promising young goaltenders, uh, one of the best buildings and atmospheres in the American Hockey League, but um, you know, 20 games into the season for the Rocket, they're 5-11, and one uh, sitting in the basement of the the North Division, and it seems like they're one of those teams right now that you just don't know what you're going to get um, anytime you stack up against them. No, they're on a seven-game losing skid right now, and as a matter of fact, their last win was that comeback victory over the Belleville Sends back on November the 15th, and ever since then, it just seems like it's been uh, just, they've just been snake bitten. They've had a couple of one, quite a few one-goal losses, and a couple games just slipped away from them, and they do have uh, one of the best, brightest young talents in the AHL, and Josh Waugh, who uh, has 18 points. It was actually the leading score in the American League uh, earlier in the season for maybe about a couple weeks, and he's been uh, stuck at 18. Brandon Jinyak also has 18, a more veteran guy in the AHL, having spent time with the Binghamton Devils and now uh, the uh, Laval Rockets. So, uh, yeah, it's it's a team that uh, has a lot of uh, good mix of good young talent and guys that can put the puck in the net like a, a Wah and a Jinyak and uh, several others like a Sean Farrell, Mitchell Stevens, Gabriel Simino. But uh, for whatever reason, Laval just hasn't been able to figure it out. And like I said, it seems like uh, that 
comeback win against Belleville almost uh, sent them in reverse in the sense that uh, they just haven't been able to recapture that magic. But uh, now Belleville trying to send them to an eighth straight loss on Wednesday night. So that'll be uh, a big uh, test for them. They can't get too complacent, especially given that Belleville itself has been great the last few games. Uh, points in four to the last five. So uh, we'll see uh, what Belleville can do against a Laval team that uh, has struggled, but uh, they're a team that cannot be underestimated. Nobody can be underestimated in the AHL, so you got to pick your spots carefully and, and uh, don't make any uh, silly mistakes that can cost you. It's much like uh, the Belleville Senators a week ago when they had lost five in a row, and you're looking at the, the roster going, well, heck, I know this team is more capable of, of the results that they're showing, so the Senators certainly won't be able to turn off uh, against the Rocket, and I'm sure you know they'll be acting uh, like they're on a losing skid as well still uh, to try and bring their best effort, pick up a win on Wednesday night uh, against the Rocket. Um, for the Senators, uh, they'll have some, uh, some help back this week, uh, Matt Highmore sent back from Ottawa over the weekend. Uh, Roby Arvendi, of course, was back last week and made an impact. Uh, it looks like Cole Reinhardt and uh, I believe Taryn Pfizer, I think I saw him out there as well at practice uh, on this Wednesday morning, are, are uh, inching closer to return. Doesn't mean they will be back this week, but uh, always good when you see guys uh, out of the non-contact blue and, and getting into the mix, and we'll get an update on all that from Dave Bell on Wednesday too. Um, but uh, the Sens are going to need it. They're going to need the help. They've got this Rocket team that, as you mentioned, uh, and as they've seen, can uh, break out at any time. And then they've got the Grand Rapids Griffins uh, on the weekend, an unfamiliar opponent, and that always poses kind of a different challenge. Yeah, Grand Rapids is an interesting opponent. Like, uh, we haven't seen them. The Belleville Sens haven't seen them since 2019-20. So it's, uh, it's almost like a brand-new uh, team, really, out there. And 1920 uh, feels like so long ago, even though it was only four seasons ago. But uh, they've got some uh, good pieces as well. You got uh, Zach Aston Reese, former Toronto Maple Leaf. Uh, Taro Hirose as well. Uh, you got Marco Casper, a key uh, guy to watch out for that Austrian sensation. Uh, part of uh, probably Austria's best overall crop of players, along with Marco Rossi, who's in the mm. Minnesota Wild organization. And then uh, a guy that uh, we've, we've heard quite a bit about uh, on other teams before, Brogan Rafferty, uh, former Vancouver Canuck piece, uh, big, tall Jarek McIsaac, William Wallinder, and Sebastian Costa and Michael Hutchinson, a pretty good goaltending tandem yeah. as well. Costa from uh, the Detroit Red Wings uh, system, first-round pick, a guy that uh, spent some time in the ECHL, which is rare for a first-round pick uh, of his stature. And uh, then Michael Hutchinson, we've seen him a bunch with the Toronto Marlies and, and uh, got some time at the Maple Leafs, among many other teams. Uh, so it's a roster that's filled with a lot of uh, great talent and guys that can really step in and, and be uh, tough on the, on the opposition. And uh, they really mirror their head coach, Dan Watson, who uh, the AHL.com did a nice feature on him about maybe a month or so ago. Uh, former uh, Sarnia Sting Jr. So uh, and also a former uh, minor pro standout as well. So uh, interesting, uh, interesting opponent. Nice to see a new opponent into the CAA arena as well for a couple games. There is a Belleville connection to the Grand Rapids Griffins. Matt Luff is on the roster. Former Belleville Bull injured right now, so unlikely to play. But uh, always nice again to see some familiar names that we know from uh, the Bulls days popping up around the league. And uh, we wish Matt Luff the best in, in his recovery. Um, I, I don't think it's going to change too much the fact that it's an unfamiliar opponent. Dave Bell has been pretty adamant throughout the course of the first quarter of the season that the Senators are focused on themselves and what they need to do to be successful. Um, so with that in mind, Brock, how do the Senators um, have another successful week here and, and try to build on what they were able to accomplish uh, over uh, three games last week? Yeah, it's keeping on the same page, really, and keep that energy level up because uh, those trips uh, to Laval are pretty can be pretty intimidating and, and uh, some time on the bus, uh, but... Uh, uh, I mean, Belva can get in and actually, uh, you know, get some time to rest. They go on the bus uh, Tuesday and then get a chance to relax a little bit and get some on-ice work beforehand. Uh, but, yeah, it's just about keeping the energy level up and, and really uh, putting it to a Laval Rocket team that gave them a pretty hard fight last game. They've split the two games so far to 12, and uh, it's a, it's a very familiar opponent, unlike the the Grand Rapids Griffins coming up. So uh, Belleville knows kind of the systems now. They know what the Laval Rocket are capable of. So just keep on the forecheck and push their defense uh, behind because uh, Belleville has the type of guys that can really grind 
games out and really find ways to uh, to cause a lot of consternation amongst the uh, the defense and uh, the goaltending as well. So uh, if you get those lines stuck together as well, like the Arvente, Sokolov, Crookshank, and uh, Smanko, Pilon, and uh, Stopchuk, who are very effective on the weekend, uh, Belbel should be in a great position to try and win. And... Uh, Mad Sogard and Kevin Mandelazzi, if they can both uh, stay healthy, stay in the net, then uh, and be as good as they were the last week or mm -hmm. so, then they'll be in a very uh, great spot to succeed because uh, they've they've known Belleville very well over the last little bit, uh, and they've they've got better NHL experience now. So uh, these uh, trips to Laval and and playing an unfamiliar opponent, that's it should be uh, absolutely a piece of cake for them. And Matthew Highmore is back from the National Hockey League. That will certainly add some punch up front. We'll see what kind of uh, uh, attitude and, uh, and mindset he's got. Hopefully it's similar to Roby Arvetti's from last week because uh, Roby came back and was just electric for the Senators, as you mentioned earlier on in the program. Uh, and, and again, from what it looks like at practice, some guys are getting closer to returning to full health, and that means that uh, the roster is starting to fill up again. So with that in mind, Oren Santazo was released from his pro tryout this week, and uh, Donovan Sobrango, the defender who has been hurt, um, is uh, back in the ECHL. He's gone back to to the Allen Americans to join Levy Marilinen and Mark Sinclair down there. So uh, all signs, I think, right now pointing uh, in the right direction as we set off the top for the Belleville Senators as they get set for, for this big week. Uh, you know, they got to try to put the uh, distraction of uh, Christmas being right around the corner uh, in the back of their mind. Not that many of these guys will get much holiday because it's only a four-day break at Christmas. Uh, we'll talk about that a little bit more heading into next week, though, uh, on the Belleville Sens podcast. Um, can tell you, next week... Our feature guest will be uh, Jimmy McLean, and if you've been to a Belleville Sens home game this season, you'll know Jimmy. He's our in-game host. We want to introduce him to uh, more of our fans. He's got a unique story, so we'll talk with him next week on the program and uh, keep on rolling here as we head towards the uh, turn of the calendar into 2024. Uh, again, December continues with a big week in Laval on Wednesday night at home against Grand Rapids on Friday and Saturday. Tickets for the home games, Ticketmaster.ca. We've got holiday packs available. Uh, if you want to book your holiday party, might as well do that as well with a handful of games at home before Christmas time. Uh, for any of those premium offers and group packages, just head to BellevilleSends.com or send an email to tickets at BellevilleSends.com. Uh, final thoughts, Brock, before we uh, get out of here? Well, uh, the uh, Belleville Sens uh, go into Laval, and then they, they've got a great opportunity to gain points again against another North Division squad and a team that's been badly struggling lately. But like you said, can't get too complacent. You just got to push it on and, and uh, keep, keep the same uh, sort of strategy and playbook that you had uh, over the weekend, which was so successful against uh, another very explosive and talented Rochester Americans team. And then the Grand Rapids Griffins, 7 9 1 and 1 in the year, a team under 500 again. So. Uh, this is where Belleville just got to buckle down and pretend, like you said, like they're, they're on a losing skid of their own, or uh, better yet, just uh, pretend like it's all 0-0 and everybody's uh, on the same page because as soon as you start thinking about records and stats and all that, then you sort of get lost in the shuffle. So uh, for Belleville, just keep the same strategy going. Like I said, keep that energy up, and they should be in a good spot. Don't forget to subscribe to the pod wherever you're listening, rate and review, and join us next week for Episode 8 of the Belleville Sends Podcast.